Welcome back, Wolfpack. Vrillis here, and this is how to use Breloom. Breloom is a really historic Pokemon. That back in the fourth generation, it was a really impactful Pokemon that almost dictated the game in several ways, and it's a very strong Pokemon because of it. However, looking at its stats, you wouldn't really think that. That has almost nothing for hit points and defenses. You'd expect to one-shot it with almost anything. Its speed, a lot of Pokemon can outspeed it. The only main thing that you see here is a high 130 attack, and we already know a lot of Pokemon that have similar attacks and better stats. And if we look at its typing, well, that is a really awesome typing, Grass Fighting, because everything's just even. You have six neutral hits, six weaknesses, six resistances. That's pretty awesome. However, though, we always want to make sure that weaknesses are valued with more weight than anything else. So six weaknesses is a lot. I don't care how many resistances you have. Something is going to hit you super effective. And as we saw earlier with those bad defensive stats, it's not going to be the best for you. However, when we hop into Pokemon Showdown, we see that Breloom gets Spore. Spore is one of the most busted moves in the game, that only four Pokemon have access to it. Breloom, Parasect, Amoongus, and Smeargle, because Smeargle has access to everything. 100% chance to put your opponent to sleep. No ifs, ands, or buts. However, with the changes to 6th generation, Grass-type Pokemon are not affected by Spore, so that does nerf Spore and Breloom a bit. But back in the 4th generation, when Breloom was the, like, the only real Pokemon that had Spore, it was insane and this Pokemon had an incredible amount of power back then because there were less things to stop it. Now there are more threats introduced and there are some game changes that have made it a little better, but back then that was just unheard of. So it has really shaped the game from that standpoint and I think the game will never be the same again because of it. But overall when we also look at it, the rest of Breloom is pretty strong. They have Mock Punch, Bullet Seed, Force Palm, all these get the Technician boost and then you just hit absurdly hard from there. Force Palm becomes a 90 base power 100 accuracy move with a 30% chance to paralyze the target. Bullet Seed, each hit counts for 37 damage. So I mean, it doesn't even matter, all you have to do is land 2 Bullet Seed, and you're going to get that 50% technician boost, so it's like hitting anything with a 75 power. Any more Bullet Seed than that, and you're just doing crazy damage, and then Mock Punch, priority with 90 base power after stab. So the idea here is you use Focus Sash to set up a Spore, and then you just overrun your opponent. The opponent is slower than you you're good to go like the idea is you don't want to really lead with Brelum. you want to bring it in on a pokemon that's going to be slower than you your opponent has to make the decision of leave that slower pokemon in and have it go to sleep or bring in a faster pokemon that can handle it and have it go to sleep and then after that focus sash will proc on the next pokemon because no one wants to risk switching around on a Brelum. if you get a double spore prediction that could just be the end of the game right there so when we're looking at it you want to bring it in on a slow pokemon after you've knocked out or dealt with that slow Pokemon, the fresh Pokemon that comes in, you have Focus Sash. So you get to counter that Pokemon by enduring the hit, using Spore, and then beating up on that Pokemon while it's asleep. And that's pretty much why Breloom was such a terrifying Pokemon. Now also, I was even thinking in double battles, you can go for Scarf on Breloom. Uh, yeah, choice Scarf. That even though you're going to be locked into Spore, it doesn't really matter that you have a Pokemon with Fake Out. Fake out one Pokemon, that means Breloom's going to use Spore on that other Pokemon, and then, since that Pokemon's asleep, the Pokemon that got faked out didn't do anything, you Spore that Pokemon next turn, and you're good to go. Essentially, consider it Dark Voice, Void Smeargle Light, because you could go Dark Void Smeargle, have 80% chance to hit both opponents, but with Breloom, you can kind of do the same, and then you can leave it for later on in the game. You switch it out because both of your opponent's Pokemon are asleep, and then you get a safe switch in later for all kinds of crazy damage potential, or even more Spore. So that's just like an interesting little thing. Also with Choice Scarf, if we look at the speed here, that we're going to get to 100 and, or not one, not, 393 speed. That's going to outspeed a lot of even speed nature Pokemon. Um, let's check Noivern really quick. So if we look at Noivern, 123 base speed. If we go for that Timid Nature and we max it out, you're going to have outspeed on Noivern. You're going to have outspeed on over 125 speed with that speedy nature. On this Breloom. So once you get like the one speed boost into it, you're kind of looking really scary while putting everything to sleep. And like Choice Scarf, more doubles, Focus Sash is gonna be more singles. Also, we'll see that Breloom, while it does have poor uh, tanky defensive stats, it also gets access to Poison Heal. Some people, they'll just decide to go with the Protect, Proc Toxic Orb if you don't get hit super. Like this is the big thing. If you don't get hit super with that hit point investment, you have a good chance of surviving. Now you get the Spore, you set up a Leech Seed, you get your Drain Punch, and then most of the time you're going to get almost all of your health back before the opponent gets a chance to move, and then again, as long as they don't bring anything super, Spore, Leech Seed, set up like that. Now again, this is also going to work very well against slower, tankier Pokemon, and it just 
completely crushes these Pokemon a lot of the time. Other ways to run Breloom is with Endure or Substitute. Now, Endure is going to be a TM from Generation 4. This is also another reason why Breloom was scary back then, because everyone had access to this idea that you use Endure. You get Pop down to one hit point. Sound like Berry Procs. And now you're going to deal with that, you know, the Choice Scarf speed, which outspeeds everything, especially back then. Very few Pokemon had 125 base speed back in the fourth generation. So now you're just going to be able to outspeed Spore, Drain Punch, Bullet Seed, just destroy anything. You could go also have the F Force Palm again. If we can find it, there. And Bullet Seed for just a lot of damage, a lot of coverage, and you're just going to be able to ruin anything that's in your way from there. Now, in VGC, or using something that's going to be Battle Spot legal, since it has to have the blue Pentagon, you can't hatch your Pokemon and then teach it a fourth generation Endure TM. So for that, for the current idea, we have Substitute. That if you have Substitute, you can set up on a lower speed Pokemon, or Pokemon that's not going to quite knock you out, or Pokemon that's setting up. That if you can use three Substitutes, you're going to drop down to a quarter health remaining. Salic Berry is going to proc at that point, and now you're dealing with the same thing. The only thing you have to worry about is priority, but if they don't have priority left, you just spore, destroy them, and then you can win from there. So this is like, the newer Breloom is the Breloom I prefer to run, and it's a really awesome Pokemon. that I It's, it's done some really cool things. And then we also just have Swords Dance set up, that with Swords Dance, Focus Sash, and Mock Punch, you can do a serious amount of damage, or Swords Dance Spore, that, you know, use your Focus Sash, proc Spore. So it's kind of like running this with Swords Dance instead of Force Palm. And you can, you can do some crazy stuff because Mock Punch, if you're invested just with the uh, Jolly Nature, so you don't even need the Offensive Nature, Max Attack, with one Swords Dance, you one-hit KO Mega Kangaskhan, as long as it doesn't have, I think, more than 100 EVs and hit points. And most of the Kangaskhans run speedy. So if you did have the Adamant Nature, you're going to have a very high chance of Okoing almost any Mega Kangaskhan from the Mock Punch, which is re really good on that priority. Other than that, you're still looking at some really good speed support, and... This is where Breloom can excel really well, that the biggest problem we've seen is that it's speed. Well, if you have Tailwind supporting it, or if you have a Sticky Web. If you have a Sticky Web team, you need to put Breloom on that right now, because Breloom on Sticky Web is one of the most terrifying things that could be possible, since it's going to be outspeeding almost every Pokemon. Flying-type Pokemon will still get the outspeed because they're not affected by it, but if it's a Flying-type Pokemon, you don't want to leave Breloom in on that. That's a four times weakness. You'll find something else to deal with that. So you have a Pokemon like a Steel-type or something that resists flying, really well like a rock or a steel type pokemon you have breloom and you have a sticky web setter and that's going to be a very strong team dynamic right there just to give you some ideas of what breloom can do after that you can do your spore setup you have swords dance swords dance mock punch swords dance bullet seed will take care of almost any pokemon and once you're set up it's very good so a lot of options here for breloom it can run very different ways but pretty much you're going to want to focus on spore focus on speed and then focus on one hit KOing. Or not one hit, but getting tons of damage on a lot of Pokemon. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and that's how you use Breloom.